to introduce you to Darren Wagner, who is the president of Balmoral Resources. Darren. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Darren Wagner. I'm the president and CEO of Balmoral. Balmoral is a high-grade Canadian gold explorer focused primarily in the province of Quebec on the detour gold trend at the north end of the Abitibi. Corporate disclosure. It's fairly infrequent that the gold guy in the room actually has to stand up and defend his medal. So I'll just talk briefly to the medal and the opportunity I think it presents uh, before talking a little bit more about Balmoral. Investing should be simple. Buy low, sell high. Unfortunately, we do tend to break those rules from time to time and follow the, follow the herd and buy near the peak. And certainly there's no better example of that than what we saw in the gold market over the last 10 years in the run-up. But obviously it's traded off. Uh, and the big question obviously for in respect to the metal is does the current trade-off, does the current level present a buying opportunity? It's traded off about 33% from its peak. Um, and it does seem to want to, you know, nudge itself forward, at least trade sideways at this point in time. So while the gold price may present an interesting opportunity, we do think that the gold stocks present a much greater opportunity in the near term with respect to their upside. And we would, we would simply use charts like this to demonstrate that. And this is simply the XAU, the Gold Miners Index, uh, four times in the last 10 years. It's come down and touched that bottom line. Uh, each of the four times, it has rebounded moderately to spectacularly off of that and that has marked a very good buying opportunity in the gold market for investors. As a matter of fact, if you were brilliant, and I don't see you know everybody here being brilliant, but most of it maybe, uh, you had a chance here to compound over four times seven to eight hundred percent. I obviously didn't do that because I'm still standing here giving them presentations. However, there was that opportunity and that line has been dead solid for 10 years and it looks like we just bounced off it again. And I think most of you have seen the updraft in the gold market and in particular in the stocks. You will note, while the gold price has come down 33% off its high, the gold stocks have come down orders of magnitude greater than that. So it has been a, a precipitous fall for all of us in the gold space. However, buy low, that's I think where we are at the moment. Um, we all know the run the Dow's been on, uh, and we all know how volatile the gold stocks are. Having said that, if you had put your money into the gold market in 2001 when the index was launched, and even if you just stuck there, you hadn't taken any profit opportunities, you are still ahead of the Dow despite a 100% run in the Dow over five years. So I guess the argument is, would you want, do you want to buy the Dow? Do you want to keep your money in the Dow? Or do you want to look for something that's been beat up fairly substantially that now represents an opportunity? I know where my bet is. So my case for the metal, if you will, but more importantly, my case for the gold stocks. If you are going to play in the gold stocks, obviously you can play in the producing end or you can play in the exploration end. And I, you know, for my two cents, and I'm not an investment advisor and this is not investment advice. And I forgot to add that in earlier. I'll be a whole kind of trouble with my lawyer on the board. Please consider adding some of the explorers. Obviously, the producers give you a little bit more quote unquote steady state, but they've taken their lumps too. Matter of fact, if you'd hidden out in some exploration names, you'd have been better off than being in the number of the explorers, plus you get the multiplier factor. And that's what we do for a living. We're explorers by trade. Our job is to go and find it and to do our very best to get the extreme highest value for it before we pass it on to somebody else to go and build it. So in order to do that, there are a few key factors in putting together an exploration company, and I'd like to touch on those and obviously how they relate to Balmoral. People, A number one. Any exploration company is only as good as the people that run it. Doesn't matter how much money it has in the bank, doesn't matter what else it does, the people are absolutely key. I like to believe my people are first rate, and so do other members of the industry. We were recently recognized, it's a 2013 Prospectors of the Year in the province of Quebec. That is not an easy award to win, and we are extremely proud of the work that we've done to win it, and we are hoping to repeat the same in 2014 as a warning shot to the other Quebec explorers. I'm a geologist by background. It comes with the beard. And uh, so is Mr. Mann, who uh, leads our exploration. He's a barrack veteran um, and had the misfortune of working for me as a student many moons ago in Kamenko. Uh, he's been with us for quite some time, does an extraordinarily job, probably the hardest working guy that I know. 
Our board is then diverse. You've got management sitting there as geologists. You do not want the rest of the board to be geologists. You want business people. And it's not a bad concept to have a lawyer on the board of a junior explorer these days. Uh, we are extraordinarily happy to have ad added a Vancouver uh, fixture, I guess, in Mr. Graham Curry to the board just this past week. Mr. Curry brings over 30 years of experience both in the investment banking side and as a senior analyst. This is an individual who had his pick of places to go and, uh, and uh, drop into a director's seat after his retirement. Uh, we're extraordinarily happy he picked us to work with and we think it does speak volumes about what we're doing. Where are you working? Uh, as a CEO of an exploration company, one of the most important decisions we ever make is where we are going to invest your money. Uh, we, have, we can go anywhere. There's lots of gold opportunities planted over. Um, we like to be in very safe political jurisdictions. This is a high risk game. One factor, risk factor we can eliminate is where we work on your behalf. And thus, we have chosen to work in Canada. Part of the reason we've chosen to work in Canada is it in the North America as a whole, it is absolutely the best place to look for gold deposits. There are more of them here than there are anywhere else and we think that'll continue to be the case for decades to come. And in particular, we like the province of Quebec. And sometimes it's best to let third parties do your talking for you. So a quote from Mr. Chuck Jeunesse, uh, obviously the President and CEO of Gold Corp. We are pleased to make a further substantial investment in the province of Quebec, one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world. That's a bit topical at the moment. That was a quote out of his press release about a few days ago as they made the bid to take over a Cisco. So you don't have to take my word for Quebec being an absolutely fabulous place to, uh, to work. Uh, you can take Chuck's for it uh, and we're very happy to see that. It actually brought a lot of focus to the space and obviously that Abitibi sector has helped lift. That's where we live. It's the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. It's the second largest accumulation of high grade gold on the planet. Uh, the, first lar the largest is in South Africa and I think if you had the choice of where you'd rather invest your money, I think it's going to be here. Um, we like to play at scale, so we have a very large project located at the north end of Ab the Abitibi Belt. Our only significant neighbor in that belt is a company called Detour Gold that you might have heard of. They now operate what will soon be the largest gold mine in Canada and we control 80% of their backyard. The, nice part about, the other nice part about being in the Abitibi is it's where the producers want to be. We kind of refer to it as soul food for the, mining for the gold miners. When things get rocky elsewhere, when other countries start slamming their doors on the gold miners, they tend to migrate home. And so this is actually the heart of the M&A sector uh, in the gold business over the last, well, let me probably go back 20 years. Company, the dominoes continue to fall, uh, including a company that was near and dear to our heart called West Timmins, which, is, which we ran previously. Uh, so we do know this space, we do know the players in this space, and our, the recognition is if you find something of significance in the Abitibi, in all likelihood there is a buyer that wants to come knocking on your door, and that's not a bad scenario for shareholders. Scale is also important. Companies, large companies, don't like postage stamp properties. We play at scale, we always have. We believe in doing district scale exploration that is never predicated on, a, on the failure of a single drill hole. What are we talking about when we talk about scale? Well, this is our, uh, this is our Detour Gold Trend project. This is our flagship. It covers about 80 kilometers of the Detour Gold Trend. As I said earlier, basically we own 80% 80, 80 of the belt. We own 100% of that ourselves. And our only significant neighbors up there are Detour and one of their small junior. Uh, not only do we own it, it covers about 600 square kilometers. So this is a great place to be. It is the last of the unexplored frontiers in the Abitibi. Traditionally has been a difficult place to work because access has been limited and because they put a whole, some silly old glaciers came and dumped a ton of dirt all over everything. So there's very little outcrop, which makes the exploration somewhat challenging. That doesn't particularly phase us. We did this kind of work down in the Timmins Belt for a number of years, resulted in putting up about two and a half million ounces of gold and selling the company for $424 million. So we've got a toolkit that works through here, but it has kept the prospector out. So it does present a somewhat unique opportunity in this belt to be able to put together a land position of that scale and be able to make discoveries. And that's exactly what we've been doing. And not only have we been making discoveries, they're very good grade. Gold prices come off significantly. What you've seen from most of the producers is now a focus on what we'll call quality ounces that we can actually make a few dollars on. 
rather than quantity of ounces. The ounces are us game has come to a screeching halt and those companies with a million ounces of one gram are stuck at the side of the road. We don't play that game, we never will. We play at grade, and what do I mean by grade? The average grade of global gold production right now is 1.01 grams. Uh, the average grade of production historically in the Abitibi is 7.2 grams, so about seven times greater than the average current global production grade. Gold grade curve on the producing side, there you can see if you're in that uh, eight, eight gram range, eight to 10 gram range, you are in very, very, very rarefied air in the gold business. And obviously these are assets that people want. These are the ones that are high profit, high margin opportunities. These come from the headlines from our last three press releases. So the Bug Lake Zone, 27 grams or 0.7 ounces over 20 feet, 10 grams, 0.3 ounces over 70 feet or 21 meters from Martin Air West, which is about 600 meters away from Bug Lake. And on a North Shore property in Ontario, where we're in partnership with a company called GTA Resources and Mining, of whom we own about 12%, nine grams, a piddly nine grams, 0.28 ounces over nine meters. Uh, so this is the kind of grade that we focus on. Uh, this, is, this is what we are after. We put a little sharper focus then on a particular aspect, one, one particular project at Martin Air, which is our current flagship. That's what it looks like. Not exactly scenic downtown Vancouver. Pretty flat, pretty much bug infested country. Has the very distinct advantage though of not being overly wet. That's as wet as that property ever gets. So we do year, work year round. Uh, we work in the summer dominantly helicopter, winter road. Winter Road is now in for the winter drill program and I actually have the crew in camp to begin the winter drill program here in the next week. When you scrape the dirt away, what we find is a multitude of zones. This is a new discovery that we made about two years ago. It led to that prospector of the year designation this past year. And so what we are evolving is not one, not two, not three, but a plethora of high grade gold zones located as part of this system. It is open at this point in every direction uh, just this past week, we announced another five or six, I guess it was ended up being five gold discoveries and a new VMS discovery just for fun, which is a base metal discovery just the north of here. So there are a number of opportunities for us to grow. We are still uh, in the process of defining a maiden resource, partly due to the fact that every time we go out here, this thing gets bigger, which requires more infill, which requires more drilling, which continues to put the resource off a little bit. But that's a good problem to have. It's not one I have a serious issue with. This is what it looks like when you cut it away. So we've traced these high grade zones from surface down to about 350 meters vertically below surface. That's about the, the depth that it's comfortable to do a ramp into the deposits below that. You're starting to talk about a shaft. Dominantly, they're all grade uh, cored by very high grade results. And in the Bug Lake case, we have a much broader halo around the zone, 50, 60 to 100 meter wide halo around the zone, which may give you an opportunity for a starter pit. Ultimately though, what we're after here is that 8 gram plus mineralization that makes underground mines sing. Looking at a cross section, just to give you an example of how this thing sits in the ground, what we typically see along that Bug Lake structure is multiple high grade, uh, high grade veins cored by a very broad zone of lower grade gold mineralization which in which are a number of high grade opportunities. So every drill hole that we drill tends to get four or five zones. It does from time to time get a little confusing for investors on that front because almost every one has a plethora of zones in it. Um, when you see the sections though, you, will, uh, you do get to see the continuity of these zones as they go down to depth. To date, all the drilling has been very shallow. The deepest holes in the property are only down to about 350 vertical. Mines in the Abitibi are now mining down at about 3,000 vertical. So this is uh, scratching the surface work, but it has shown uh, good, very good continuity, excellent grades all the way through. This is the footwall zone. This is the first sort of modeling attempt that we've done on the footwall zone. This is just filthy stuff. Um, last press release added about another 50 vertical meters to this. So that's down to about 250 vertical now. That zone is averaging over an ounce per ton. 600 meters away, we have the west zone. Again, very good continuity all the way down. And as you can see there, consistently good high grade mineralization all the way through the zones. So there are a number of these on the property. Not only what you're going to have is a number of zones from which you can extract high grade gold mineralization to one central processing facility within about six or 700 meters of each other. And that's a start. 
This is an IIP map, this is a geophysical map of the property. The uh, yellow represents that Bug Lake zone I showed you the cross section from. This was, work was done this summer. Uh, we identified a very large geophysical feature that trends off to the southwest, or sorry, southeast. That feature we've drilled the first couple of holes into. We announced those last week and lo and behold, there is another gold bearing structure on the property with significant grades in it that is now wide open for future follow up. So that's the growth path in the near term for us really is to continue to expand and drill out these high grade opportunities uh, on that Martinair project. That is one very small postage stamp. If you look very, very carefully at this map, in the middle you will see two little green stars. I can't actually see them from here. They're that small. That's Martinair. That's the entire thing I've spent most of my presentation talking about. We control 600 square kilometers around that. That was our first discovery. We have made a series of them since then and we continue to make more. And so now, although I would make the argument you want to look at Balmoral for the high grade gold mineralization, the expansion of that system, and the opportunities it pre represents, I'm going to give you a free poker chip. And we are going to go out and give that to you immediately. So in 2011, we made a nickel, copper, platinum discovery. We've been a little busy with the high grade gold stuff for the last couple of years. But this summer we went out and we spent a fair bit of time and effort looking at that opportunity and a nearby gold discovery we'd also made in 2011 in preparation for this winter drill program. We got one of the best fits for a geophysical anomaly and that's what it is folks, it's a, it's a target. It's as good a target as I, have, as I have worked on in seven years of doing platinum palladium exploration both in Canada and in South Africa in my previous life. Um, it's over a thousand meters long. We tagged it at the very extreme southern end. Uh, it has a very good platinum tenure to it. It has a phenomenal nickel tenure to it. Uh, and it is wide open. And we will put the first drill holes into the, the heart of this thing in about two weeks' time. So while we are a gold company, we are not blind to other opportunities. And we do think this is actually a very, very neat bet. And oh, by the way, in behind, there's about a four or five gram gold uh, discovery that we've made. We'll also be drilling that while we're out drilling this, this fun little nickel target of ours. Eight kilometers north of that nickel target, there's still mineral, nickel, one, one and a half percent nickel mineralization in that same sequence. So it does have the potential to get sizable. One of the most important questions you've all asked everybody when you've met them this last couple of days is, how much money do you have? Can you go and do this? The answer for us, fortunately, is yes. We do have a bit of an established track record, so we have been able to attract strong funding. We've got $10.5 million in our treasury. So for this year, we've slated $5 million, and I'll call it a flexible $5 million. If the market will show us some love, we will expand that. But we've got $10.5 million currently in the treasury, so we are completely set for 2014 and well into 2015 with the, with the, uh, the current cash in the bank. And the best part about being in Quebec for every hard dollar we spend on the ground, the Quebec government gives us 35 cents back. So that is, in reality, closer to about $14 million that we actually have to work with um, in working capital. So really, for, for Balmoral, over the next several months, what you're looking for is a plethora of drill results. We're very good at filling up your inboxes, uh, so make lots of room for us. Um, the, the poker chip to be played on the table in February uh, further discoveries, heading towards a maiden resource, and I don't necessarily going to give you a definitive time on that, um, but I will say heading towards there towards the end of the year, that's the plan at the moment. Some of that's market contingent, obviously. We have a third party joint venture sitting in the North Shore project in uh, Ontario that's producing some very interesting results and a company, very tightly structured company that we control 12% of there. So really, Quality management, experienced in this space and successful here before, one of the best places on the planet to be. The hub of M&A activity, so if we find it, there is a buyer for it. We know that 100%. We control this project outright, 100% of it, over 600 square kilometers. There's virtually no one in this business that can say that. Multiple expanding high-grade gold discoveries, the free poker chip for you, well-financed, active drilling, and thank you very much for your time today. <laughs>